Welcome, everybody, to a Delco Nerd Network hot take. Folks, if you haven't seen a hot take before, well, it's where a few friends get in a basement. We give our thoughts. We give our opinions on a TV show, a movie, or a game. Today, it's going to be a TV show, and that TV show is... See, that's where the title card would be. Yeah, for Invincible Season 2. Here to discuss, as always, the triple threat, Chris Trio. Gooch, gooch, gooch. How we doing today, my friend? Uh, are you ready to talk some Invincible? I'm doing well. Beautiful Sunday. Absolutely. We're here to chat. I uh, binged the last... F- four. Eight, four? It was eight episodes? Yeah, it was eight. Yeah, total. so I binged the last four this week. I'm caught up. Love We're it. ready to go. And yeah, I was kind of keeping up with it week to week. Yeah, I yeah. definitely was not. Interesting uh, that Prime kind of does both release schedules, by the way. So, uh, yeah, there's a question. With there's, Fallout just coming out, but not. So, I think, yeah, I agree. It's it's interesting. I think it just is kind of a, a touch and go thing where I, I do think it works for Fallout, but we were having this discussion in the Discord. I agree with you most of the time where, like, I think the weekly schedule is fun because it allows you to all be in the same place at the same time and kind of for talk longer, about it yeah. and, and, and it hangs around for a bit longer. And you don't feel that need to rush. Mm-hmm. But it is interesting. I don't know why they do that. But you're talking. Let's keep that up. Yeah. Uh, you finished first, so why don't you go first? What did you Absolutely. think of uh, the second season of Invincible? We didn't do the first season. No, because... And it, that was my fault. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's all right. I, I blame think, Gooch every day, but yeah, it's fine. No. I, I wanted to read it before I watched it. Yeah. So I w- read, and then I started watching. Oh, I meant to go get my compendium, because I wanted to see, like where we have left off in terms of the compendiums, which there are three of. But I'm sure we can Google it, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, so I've somehow managed to avoid like all things Invincible. This is like one of the only... You haven't read it. I haven't read it. This is one of like those superhero properties that I've just been like, I really like this animated show. I don't know much about this. I don't want to know where it's going. So I decided to abstain from the reading at this point. But I- I'm going to get to it eventually, for sure. Uh but let's start out with the ugly first here, Gooch. And there, no, really, no. there really isn't much... I wasn't much, expecting to start there, but much ha- ugly happy, than, happy to get ugly. Absolutely, and I want to get the ugliness out of the way because I think, honestly, I thoroughly enjoyed this season for the most part. And I really think the ugliness just comes out of that release schedule. Can we get yeah. this out of the way? Oh, yeah. Because, so, oh, dude, I was, I was so I was annoyed, too. That. So they released the so first negative. four episodes in... 2023. In 2023. But, in, like, when was the last episode? I'm trying to remember. It, it was... It was, like, it, December. Was it December? It was Christmas time. That's what I thought, it, so... It, it was in December. I remember, four weeks. So yes. it, it may have, like, started, like, November and ended in December that or something like that. Yeah. So they decided to break the season in two halves. There's a conspiracy theory out there, which I don't really believe, but that they did this to line up with the ad spots coming around in, in, yeah, in Prime. Which- I, 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 you know, I fan that flame a little bit. I remember someone pointed it out to me and I, and I posted in the Discord, which you can join. And don't remember, you can also comment uh, about what you're thinking about Invincible. Yes, absolutely. See if or whatever else. Yeah. yeah, what do you think about this uh, release schedule thing? But yeah, I was like, dude. It, it just it, killed it, the momentum. It weirdly lined up. Yeah. And like, it just killed, like, I which, felt... Which, to, gi- to give it some credit, yeah. the ads are not as bad as compared to Paramount. No. You know, no. especially since we just came off Halo Season 2. It's funny to see, like, the ads done, like, Better. much more overtly in, in Paramount+. Plus, and then in Amazon, it's like, oh, okay, like, that wasn't that intrusive. No, I agree. And even, like, I mean, we'll talk about Fallout at a later date, but with Fallout, I really, like, I've been watching that, and it just, it gets all the commercials out of the way at the beginning. So it's two and a half minutes of, of commercials, and then you just go through the whole thing. I'm like, you know what? I'll take that. I'll, I'll do that. Nothing's worse, and we talked about this. I think we talked about this for the Halo thing, than that devious final ad spot on Paramount right before the credits, where it's like, oh, yeah. okay, we're coming back. Something interesting's happening. Right. Oh, I just I want to see the credits yeah. just and to make sure we're yeah, good. Yeah, we're right. all good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, Gooch. That's, that's a good point, but... The release schedule was just a momentum killer for me, for sure. I, I don't think it affected overall how I felt about the series th- this season, uh, for the most part. But it definitely frustrated me in the meantime. Uh, but I mean, that's probably the brunt of the negative for me. I think overall, I, I did enjoy the narrative arc of this season and seeing Mark, full spoilers here, uh, kind of go from this guy who's like, maybe I can make both work to like, what am I? I should be training. Like I, right. I can't be. He's, can't be both. Can't I can't both. be both, and I, I am more 
and I need to take responsibility for that in a way. And like, he starts to kind of get what his dad is saying by like in that, that whole beat down of the first season of like, I need, I, I am more than this. I'm going to watch these people die around me. And he's kind of coming to this, you know, conclusion on that. But I, I thought there was some, some fantastic action scenes in this. We see Mark get the shit kicked out of him again. I'm kind of excited to not see that. Is that a lot in the first couple comics? Or the first like run, he's just getting wrecked. You know what I noticed in the animation? They always do the left eye being puffy. And, Interesting. And yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but um, Mrs. Grayson, I forget her name off the top of my head, uh, Debbie. Debbie, yeah. Debbie and Mark both have the same eye wound at the same time uh, after Angstrom Levi fucks them up. They both have, have the like same, the, like, yeah. like the puffy black eye. And I'm right. like, that one, I, I will, and, and that leads me into, I think this show. I mean, we talked about the release schedule. There's right. clearly production issues with this show, um, whether it's the voiceover, whether it's the animation. I think it might be a combination of the two. But however they're producing this show is clearly an issue. They pulled a She-Hulk in the show where they make fun of how they do. Which I loved. I did. I thought it was. I I actually really enjoyed And they that. do that yeah. in the comic. Yeah. But I think it. It's about comic books though, right? I assume. Where yes. Talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the same scene yeah. at the Comic-Con. But the fact that Invincible has production issues with this show makes it like the She-Hulk thing. Or it's like you're pointing out your own flaws here and it's more on the nose than it is funny. Sure. I, I think it works for me personally because I, it doesn't feel like there's production issues. It just ta- it just seems to me that these take long. And, and I, I like I don't know. I, I, I took it as just a kind of funny moment, to be honest. And, and it didn't I, rub me the wrong way. And I think going into that issue further with me, I think Invincible, the comic, and in the show for the most part, it moves at a clip. Like, it's a very fast-paced narrative. Um, and, like, a lot's going on, but it's somewhat, like, contained. And I think that the production issues kind of make that clip not great. You know, okay. where where the the cadence at which you're digesting the narrative kind of gets screwed up. I mean, obviously I know between season one, season you know, between seasons there's gonna be some time off. Sure. But, you know, I think it was like two years for season one to yeah. season two. Um, it wasn't that for me because I watched season one like a, a few months after it aired. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like, I really hope with season three, they can kind of figure out what issues are going on, whether it's the voice acting and whether I guess it seems like mostly the animation. And I found the animation kind of lacking for some reason. At some points I would agree. I was like, I can see the, like, you're really getting like, you're not polishing this. You're getting it to completion and it looks nice enough. But when I was kind of, you know, kind of squinting and like, like, trying to notice things like i think in the last two episodes i was i was like paying attention and i was just like something something seems rushed here sure uh, and i hope they can just figure it out and and get it down pat and you know get it so that the seasons are are better aligned and better right. uh, have better timelines of coming out but also are better quality it looks like they are already hard at work at they already have three. the third season's voice acting done apparently which yeah. is good which is good yeah that means it's already been storyboarded out that means they are genuinely just working on animation at this point yeah I, I i agree with you in certain respects for sure i i think most of the time the animation looks fantastic to me i don't really feel like i'm seeing those scenes a lot but i i definitely think that there are some scenes where i was like okay that they're, they're taking a, a bit of uh a shortcut to a degree but i don't even almost want to say it, that because it sounds negative but i i do see what you're saying and that being said i feel like this show is a weird adaptation because its story is so fast it works with comics I, like it like I feel like season one and season two, you you almost could probably like mush them together and they'd be like the same thing. Sure. Because like there's not these like it's not like The Walking Dead where these there's these location swaps or these big changes in the narrative to kind of like, oh, well, like you even though you haven't watched The Walking Dead, you could tell me what season one is and what season two is and what season three is. Sure. Like based on location and and, and stuff. I I guess Um, I I don't necessarily see that as like a bad thing, though, in the way of you need these two to kind of connect in in a way that makes sense and that feeds the story forward and i do think it it works very well and they feel separate enough and especially with the whole ending of mark just getting destroyed by his dad in the last season yeah i I feel like that does provide a nice little like cut off and then we're into this this moment of mark trying to 
be a normal kid and trying right, post, to be that person. Omni Man, right? Trying to be that normal kid that he was fighting to be. He fought his dad. I mean, he's like, you're gonna grow up and watch all these people die around you. He's like, well, I don't care. I like, I love these people. These are my friends. And it's like, he's starting to realize how truly different his life is. Mm-hmm. And I, I did really love the whole storyline with his little brother. I thought that was a like a really kind of fascinating. Yeah? Okay, and it gets it gets interesting. <laughs> uh, I thought that. So I'm curious gonna, how it's it goes. Evolve. Yeah, yeah, because obviously I like this idea. So were you really caught off guard by that? I was totally caught off guard. I had no okay. idea what was coming. Yeah. So Mark shows up after his dad like kind of tricks him to 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 come find him, and I, I love this whole kind of crisis of conscious conscience Omni Man is having where he's like. Why do I give a shit? Why do I care now? Why why do I feel anything for these lesser beings? And like you kind of learn a bit more about the Viltrumite society and how they can they they usually mate with humanoid species because that produces things and they think they find like uh you know more abomination species like lesser and stuff like that. So I thought that was a cool layer too. Uh Rhea, uh what's her name as the alien? Fuck, Rhea Rhea, Rhea Seahorn. Seahorn. She was great. Um yeah. And that whole idea of this kid's going to age a lot quicker. I'm really curious how they're going to handle that in the future, if he's going to have powers. And then Angstrom Levy saying, like, he doesn't exist in any of the universes. So it is funny how, like, we that got the multiverse stuff. Oh, really? Um, to the depth, you know, I know season one, uh, season two, we open on that, you know, multiverse timeline where Omni-Man is joined. Um, or sorry, uh, Invincible, Invincible is, is joined uh, yeah. Omni-Man. That is not in the comics that I recall, like, th- like Angstrom Levi has the same powers, right. but you don't see that. Yeah. I like Angstrom Levi, not Angstrom Levy. <laughs> I always said Levi. Levi. It just sounds better. Like, and I'm it's just like, Le- it's because of Levi. It's because we're, we're so used to seeing that. I feel. Yeah. Well uh, with, uh, yeah, it's Levi. It's Levi jeans. Yeah. Uh, uh, Levi from Attack on Titan. It's right. like Levi. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like Levy. Levy. Yeah. If it was, a, if it was Levy, it should have been a Y. Right. I'll say that much. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think they're taking. They took a bit of a different route with that to kind of like show you, like his powers or like no, show you like these different versions of Invincible, and they allude to it in the comics that there are like other universes, and like again, I'm gonna like take a step back and not say anything more about that because I think we're, we're gonna get more multiverse stuff. Um, Again, it's Coming, funny because like we but, do get inundated with the multiverse stuff, but it's funny how this existed before. I'm sorry, continue. Yeah, Man. yeah, <laughs> good point. Yeah. But no, I think like the way the way they introduce it is a bit different in the show than in the comic. Okay, that makes sense. But like the does he mention anything about his brother in the comics like that? Like where he's the, this is the only universe he exists in or anything? You know, I don't remember if he if he specifically says that. Um, I'm also, I also didn't remember if he broke Debbie's arm like he did. Right. It's so funny. The comic is such a quick read. I forgot a lot of it and I almost don't like that. Like I finished both compendium one and two, so I am way ahead of the, of the show. How do you know how much, like, so how many years of comics is that? Do you know? I have no idea. So I'm going to look up just what the first compendium is, but continue. Yeah. Um, I did like that plot line, um, but if I remember correctly, it's more or less said and done. That's not like Angstrom Levi like isn't a huge thing going forward. And that seems know, to be the he, case. He in, dies. Yeah. So that, <laughs> obviously so that but, makes, that makes sense it, then to me. Yeah. Like it kind of ends there. Like as he's not going to keep coming back, which I which I like. Right. It's like, you know, even though, you know, it the, 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 the comic and the show have like multiple villains and it acts like it It doesn't just keep bringing people back every six seconds because in another difference from the comic um rex dies and stays dead after he gets shot yes oh shit. yeah they all die except that was except duplicate that was one where i was i do appreciate how they just go for it in these respects where it does feel game of thronesy to the degree of like yeah uh, i do think if rex died that would have been an even more extra thing but uh they are willing to kind of kill these people obviously i don't you know i don't know what will happen with invincible i'd be very surprised if they just killed mark out of nowhere but uh <laughs> yeah I, I i think that idea was kind of wild the way he got shot and then he gets up i like that actor a lot who plays him the, I thought, it, it, it's this it's the same scenario i like i don't really like rex yeah uh, Rex uh, uh, yeah like i love how he's like a gambit 
I didn't even realize that. Like, yeah, yeah that's his powers. He like kinetic energies things. Yeah. The- yeah. Yeah. I don't like him in the comic and I didn't like him in the show and I was kind of looking forward to his exit. His death. Yeah. Um, so interesting to see where we're going to go from here. Maybe they're going to kill him again. <laughs> you know, they could, they right. could always do that. But, um, uh, what did you think about the relationship between um, Amber and Mark? You know, that's kind of the big thing. It's like the big, you know, you can't do both because like I you- was <laughs> it hit, hit me hard. That breakup scene. Really? Yeah. Just uh, in the way of like, OK, they're two people who love- I have such a different perspective. I don't know. It's so funny. like because they're tr- like Amber thought they could do it. They, and so did Mark. They they were really trying. And then it gets to that point where Amber ends up being the one lying for Mark. And then it just becomes this whole thing where it's just not meant to be, even though they love each other. And like, I don't know. It was just a, a very endearing moment for me where it's just like these two people who just, it's just not going to work. It won't work, but they want it to work. And there's just a lot of sadness in that. Yeah. In my, I, yeah. I don't like Amber <laughs> in the, in the show and the comic. I like so, her better I, in this season. Cause the first season she annoyed me. I remember, but yeah, like this one, I felt like she was at least, she was trying, she understood and she was trying to be like the best she could for Mark in the way of, but like, yeah, I mean, he's just flying off and he has to do superhero things. He, what she has to keep that would get annoying. Where's your boyfriend? He's got a thing with his family today. Like you just have to keep coming up with bullshit. So in the comic, they change it up a little bit by Amber ends up cheating on Mark. Oh. Um, so there's a bit more of like um, uh, an infidelity angle with Amber. The fact that Mark has gone so much, she starts talking to other guys. She's a bit more promiscuous. Um, I think they kind of like Amber in the comic to me was always like the girl next door kind of vibe. Like she's really hot. She's blonde. She's the MJ to a degree. Yeah, yeah, no, like she definitely Mm -hmm. is. But like they write her off just as fast. Like the same thing happens when, you know, they're going back and forth. And I think he, I I think he forgives her for cheating on him, but they, they, they have like a similar, they have like a a similar thing where it's like, yeah, we just can't be together. Like I, we can't do this when you're invincible and going off saving the world at every three seconds and whatever. And, And you know, I did really like the moment, like where he was talking to his mom about like, well, what did you do when dad would go off? And she's like, well, I just kind of made it work. And like, it was really sad. He'd be gone for months at a time. And I was like, damn, like there is. So this is the stuff Gooch that Snyder loves. It's the deconstruction. It's the, yeah. the idea of, and I just, and I don't, this isn't a, just, I don't mean to bring this up just to slander him, but I think that this is like a very incredibly well example, an incredibly well done example of that, where you really kind of explore these topics. And I think he does it to a very good degree in certain ways and, and not so much in my opinion and others, but like this whole deconstruction of like the superhero mythos and they do it in Superman. Don't get me wrong. And they like, you know, the idea of Lois dealing with Superman going off and saving the world, but <laughs> I don't know, even when you introduce this idea of, like, the Viltrumites live for as long as they do, and, like, oh, that's that, that line in the first season when he calls his mom a pet, like, oh, it's fucking rough. But the, 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 the growth we see out of that and the idea of how Debbie dealt with it, and even, like, by the end of the season when we get to what Omni-Man, that, that last scene with Omni-Man, it's so good. And I, I love this stuff so much, and I, 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 I'd like to see it even more. And I, I, I want to read the, the series because of it. Cause I think that the deacon, I think you can go a little too far with the deconstruction stuff. I think the boys does that a lot. Like if you read that comic book, it's so like just a mean to the core and like, it like really tries to tackle everything to the point where it's just like, I think becomes overbearing. Yeah. The, I think the, uh, invincible has a line. Yeah. <laughs> you it, know? it definitely does. The boys feel like, really doesn't seem to have a line or care about having a line. No. But I, I think this does the deconstruction stuff very well, I guess, to put a, a pin on it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see what happens with uh, Eve. Yeah. That was another interesting scene. Just tell her how you feel, Mark. Just tell her how you feel. So did you, all, did you get the idea that Eve liked Mark at all? Yeah, ever? of course. Okay, okay. I feel like it was pretty obvious uh, yeah. for the most part. Like yeah. she had a crush of some kind at the very least. Um, I, I did like this idea of that Eve just kind of breaking the time, like just being like, hey... I have loved you this whole time. Can you please just say something to me? And even that's... Yeah, that's a, that's a cool scene. Even really that's like not that. enough for, to get Mark to, like, to do... You can send guys all the signals in the world. It'll take a while. But uh, 
I, I like that whole scene of her interacting, of him interacting with them. So that that's a different. Is that like the team from the future that comes? It, it, I kind of assumed so, something so, like that. So was Robot happen. kind of explains yeah. and, and that hey, we're from the future where you don't come back. And it sucks, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now we're like kind of like putting that timeline, like we're making like a new timeline where you do come back. So you can at least help them, right? And those guys are all still fucked. Interesting. Um, and well, well, not that they're still fucked. They're well, sure. I'm sorry, but they would go back to then again. We don't right. I guess that timeline timeline continues, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, with it without him. Uh, And I did like the moment where he lost it a lot, where he kills Angstrom. And, yeah, and the parallels the first to his kill. father. Yeah. yeah, and it's so funny because I the whole time I am like Mark, just ki like why do you have this no killing rule? And for and I guess not that he has a rule, but he really seems like avidly against it. And I'm like these people like are willing to go that line to the degree like you're fighting these Viltrumites, and I did like seeing that snap moment of him actually fully letting go, and he's like, yeah, I've been holding back this whole fucking time, and he's just pounding him into a pace, and right, it, it's a very interesting character development moment when he comes back and talks to Cecil and he's like, you're fine, man. He's like, no, I'm not fine. You didn't see what happened. If I lose control again, I don't want to know what happens. And I, and then that sets him on the journey to be like, I can't do college. I can't do regular shit. I have to train. And that... Right, it's just uh, be invincible. Yeah. yeah. And that excites me. And I think that these two seasons did a very good job of getting us to that point. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is all within the comic, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So this isn't yeah. like a, we talked about this before. I might've brought it up on the last podcast. This isn't like a preacher situation where that whole no. first, that whole first season is like not the, com it's, it's a prequel to the comic. There are some interludes, um, where they randomly told you the, um, origin story of duplicate and some of those other people right. who explode. I think Eve is also in there, but did you ever watch that Eve? I didn't. I meant to just I, go back and watch yeah, it. I'm going it's, to. it's like an hour long. All right, I'll have to. That looked really good. I just yeah, I mean, you it. could really not. It's it's fine. But I have I you know it's funny. I feel like she mentioned something in the series that I'm like, when did that like I couldn't tell if it happened like yeah on yeah or it was yeah she does it was yes. something about like saving a the, building or the, something the, like that. Um, no, that happens in the remember in the first half where her dad yells at her for fixing a building right but for, then there's a reason it wasn't it, well, and yeah, they, it falls it collapses right yeah that's yeah. in the, yeah that's in the first half okay that was another thing when I, we were talking about reviewing this i'm like dude i don't even remember what happened in those first four episodes at this point this show is tough to remember and i think again it has and maybe that's why i have a hard time remembering the comic because it moves so quickly well, but and there's not these yeah. like these clear like goalposts of like this is season one where this happens and it ends with this like i see i think season one has a very good goal yeah personally. but it doesn't happen like that in the comic where sure it's like, of course this, like clear cut off point well, like it just kind of keeps going and that's you know that's te te that's television baby that's what you gotta do you know so <laughs> I, I i get that I, I do think it does do good bookends though in my opinion like there's a clear end at yeah, season I, one I, where mark fights his dad and there's a clear season end to season two end here where he loses his shit and basically does what his dad does. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I felt like that, at least on that point anyways. Yeah. What about the, the squids? Yeah, the squids. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to yeah, go into. Sequids. Speaking of uh, like Mark kind of losing his shit. Uh, I, I like that arc again. I think it's I think it's a like I like how Invincible kind of contains its arcs and they don't overstay their welcome. They kind of come in and they go out and they but they end like and they but and sometimes they don't come back. You know what else really does that well? Uh, Sandman. Okay. It's like two episodes will be an arc and then it will move on to the next arc on the next episode or two. Yeah. But uh I yeah. do like that. The, the second stuff like it, it's fine. I, I enjoy it. I don't really think it's any like again like the villain is nothing it's like a villain. Like the Sequids is like the definition of like the villain of the, the season. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, like whatever that means. Because they weren't because it really was like a setup for their. Because it feels like they're going to play a big part in the next season in some way. Because the Sequids. Yeah, we saw the teaser at the end of the episode where the guy like throws one up right, and then it gets back on him. The the astronaut dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I think I know what that's teeing up. I think I I don't I don't like remember that being a thing. Um, but I like there there are always like these bigger threats going on and then like the day-to-day -day villain that they're like contending with like, right did, there's always like kind of like two there's the day-to-day -day, and then there's the because again like mark is not a guardian of the globe so like 
they all but he helps them right so they're fighting something else so like the sequins was like the guardian of the globe bad guy right whereas angstrom levi was invincible's bad guy makes sense okay um yeah, I mean, and we didn't really talk about that from the beginning of this season, but with, like, his transformation and right. stuff and his multiversal doppelgangers. And I, I think they wanted to illustrate that point a bit better with the multiversal Showing scenes. Showing all his different right, personas, show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, like, they get into that, like, very quickly, and then they quickly kind of leave it. But it's the same idea, I assume, that, like, he gets fused and remembers all this shit about Invincible. Yes. And hates him, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He kind of just loses his mind because, like, a bunch of his, different yeah. versions of him just kind of came in on his. Because it was supposed to be... He, he had, like, a regulator going of some kind, and then Invincible fucks it up when he when he takes out the, the twins, right, or something. Yeah. And then he, like, pulls the plug. That's yeah. what gives him the weird brain face. Uh, yeah. They couldn't fix that in any universe. Guess not. I guess so. They gave him Invincible powers, though. They must have spliced him with some Viltrumite or something. Yeah, like I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm I, like again. I don't remember him being that strong. It almost makes me want to reread the comic or get back into it. But I wouldn't. I'd never just. I might it. buy uh, Compendium One and just read up to like where I, we are. I'm pretty confident Compendium One ends where we're at. I'll okay. have to look. I, I wanted to look before we started today, but it, it kind of got got away from me. Um, but, but yeah, I liked his, the whole idea of his character where he was truly like you know. The good intentions sometimes can lead to bad things, and he seems like a good guy trying to make the universe a better place, and he's trying to fuse all his brains together so he can have all their knowledge, right, is the idea, I think. Right. Which is interesting, and, I, you know, you see this right, guy kind of tumble to, down. really to stop Omni-Man and Invincible. As in the, so in the, in the show, it didn't feel that way to me. It felt like he was like, I just want to build a utopian society. He didn't really even oh, realize right, right, like, right, right, right. like yeah, how. Yes, yeah, and yeah, yeah. then after he's fused is where he realizes in all these universes how big of a piece of shit Mark can be. Yeah, yeah. And those sorry. were some interest, like that scene with Eve when he like breaks her neck. He's like, I'd never kill you. Like, just goes full psycho. Ugh, it was good. Oh, yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so are we getting a color change in this next season? Suit color change? <laughs> How do you know about that? There's a title card at the end. It went black and blue. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How uh, how long of a jump do you think it's going to be? Not long. Not long. It's pretty like time jump. Yeah. Is no. there? No. 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 Okay. Maybe maybe, maybe, a, maybe a few weeks. A few days. Interesting. Okay. No, I didn't know if long. it picks up. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it it, I guess. It, yeah. Like with, like you're saying with the comic, it just kind of picks yeah, up. Yeah. Right? Well, we will get a new suit next season for sure. I'm excited. He wears black and blue for a little while. Um. I, I like his suit. Other. So I'm not far enough in the comic where I know. What's after that? Um, um, but I know there is a black and blue suit that he gets. And obviously, because he just fucking destroyed the one he has. I don't know if he oh, has right. multiple suits. Well, Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker will keep creating. Uh, what's his name? Ralph or whatever? Um, I, don't know. I can't. Al, maybe? I don't know. I Something forget. like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did like that scene when he went to talk to him. He's like, well, it seems like when you're talking to me, you should be talking to the fucking girlfriend. You'll be talking to him. Yeah. And I was I, like, I, 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 you know what's funny? I don't like Mark Hamill in that role. I, I found it weird. Interesting. He just yeah. sounds like not really like, he sounds like Mark Hamill doing an Like impression. a character. Yeah. Like, yeah, character, like, yeah. It, like it just kind of bothers me. Uh. Um, I wanted to talk about, um, not Paul. What's his name? The Android dude. No. Um, the Unopen. Oh, Alan. Alan the alien. Yeah. 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 Alan. Um, because then, then get into the Thraxian stuff, but what did you think about him and the, uh, the coalition and kind of finding out like what he does and. So and I that thought stuff. that was, that was cool. I, I also thought the reveal of what's his name being a Viltrumite wasn't a reveal. I thought he knew. I think, it. Like, I think they, what is it? I, like, I always thought it was Thaddeus. Thaddeus? Thaddeus or like, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's so funny though. Cause he like takes like the way he's like, he's like, I have something to tell you, Alan. Yeah, he does the same thing. He does the <laughs> he's same like, you're thing. a Viltrumite. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I yeah, kind of. So he is a Viltrumite. It's funny. I just assumed he was. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. I kind of uh, thought he was. Like, yeah. Just based off of like the Peter, way. Peter Cullen doing his voice. Fantastic. Yeah, Fantastic. Cool but, casting. Uh, I like the idea of him, I guess, f forcibly evolu evol evolving Alan by like making him kind of fend for himself. That was an interesting idea. I like that moment where he gets punched and he's like, oh. I'm fine. Like my head's still attached. Yeah, I I do like Seth Rogen in that role. Uh, yeah, and him getting absolutely fucked up by the in that Viltrumites. yeah at the beginning. Oh fuck. Yeah, yeah, and then the fight on we talked about Thraxia a little bit, but then like the fight with Omni Man and Invincible on Thraxia with the other Viltrumites. right coming in, and you kind of learn that Viltrumites really don't 
like to kill a lot of Ultramites, which is an interesting kind of layer. Yeah. And then Mark... Also There's a reason for that. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> and then Mark kind of gets told to dive into his books by his father, which yeah, similar, seemed to have a thing. bunch of... Yeah. Uh, Viltrumite weaknesses I within see, them. I, I think that I don't know if this has changed from a comic. I thought he always wrote those kind of books. Like it, in the in the comic, it seems like, or sorry, in the in the show, they were like, oh, he got away from those and went to like yeah, like romance yeah, novels. Yeah, I was like, it, it always seemed to just be like what he did. Like right, he was, he was like always a inventor. science fiction guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Um, not a really you know super di- you know sure. different change, but just something I noticed. Uh, but he does go to his books and like you know when Alan's like no these are real yeah, yeah that, like that's a real th- thing yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that's cool so you're finding out all these Viltrumite weaknesses uh, I like the idea that even two Viltrumites is like we should watch out like what's named uh, Thaddeus is kind of pumped to go now he's like oh we have a second one that's big that's gonna be huge yeah and again I think it's interesting how in this universe they are like they can be like you could stab a Viltrumite if you're strong enough. Whereas, like, you get to a Superman and you can't stab him unless you got, like, a kryptonite. I always see this thing as, like, Superman or, or Omni-Man. Superman. You think? Easy. You can't stab I, Superman. See, I would say Viltrumites might be stronger than Kryptonians on Earth. I disagree. But, so, but the thing with the Viltrumites, like you just said, you can stab them. That's what I mean. They seem much them. more like you can, you can fuck, e- they fuck each other up much more easily than we see. I feel like even Zod and Superman fuck each other up. Like, I guess, you know, Superman can break Zod's neck. So maybe they can break Superman's neck, but it depends. Still, you can't beat that first scene when he dest- when he destroys the whole Guardians in that first season. Yeah. Uh, you don't see that it's him, right, in the comic book? No, you do. I think you do. Okay, I thought it was a reveal, like, by the end. I'm trying to remember. Um, <laughs> again. Because a- I think in the comics, if I remember, that's one of the only things I know. I think he just totally, fu- like, he they don't even put up a fight in the comic and you don't see who it is. But I might be wrong. I mean, we could, we could literally, before you leave, mm-hmm. go up and look <laughs> if you wanted to. Absolutely. Because um, I, I would actually be interested to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's a different, yeah. I should have fucking done that before the podcast. It's all right. Um, but yeah, like, again, eight episodes for the season. Like, I, I think it's just, again, for the way the story is paced, I wish it was longer. I wish we had a longer season because I feel like Meaty it just, episodes, I feel like it just doesn't stick around. Um because of like like again the four and four if it was eight through i feel like it would have been differently paced but i really do think the four and four is what kind of killed the momentum yeah like oh my god if we waited till like oh i was like oh okay we're coming back in january like they're taking like the holidays off because like putting out new episodes of a show like during the holidays can be a bit you know kind of number destroying because people are busy and probably not sitting down to watch tv yeah um so, and I was like, oh, we'll be back in January. And then it was like, no, March. And I'm like, are you fucking yeah. kidding me? It just killed the moment. And, and listen, I, I do think I'd be, I'm very high on this season. I'd be even more high on it if I could have gotten that week to week. Yeah, I'm release. not as high on it. I, I don't know why. I re, like, it's not that the, like, I don't di- I, I dislike the story. I, I think it's just like, I think Invincible works better as a comic book than it does a show. Because now I got to wait again. From what you're explaining to me, it seems like a pacing issue. To me, that you, that a pacing issue, a pacing adaption. Sure, at a, and that's almost kind of yeah. why I, I'm kind of glad I haven't read it yet. Yeah, so I'm not kind of comparing in my mind, which you know that's the nature of the beast. It happens because yeah. like, like when you read the original material. So yeah, well, I mean, it's good you haven't read it, and it's good I oh, absolutely, have, and I, have I've somehow ignored here. it to this point. So, and even like spoilers online, like there's so many videos of like. What are Viltrumites? And like, I could dive into the lore of this, and I'm like, no, no, resist, don't. yeah, yeah, resist. Yeah, like, I, there's there's a lot you don't know. That's why I, I, <laughs> I really Viltrumites. managed to stay somehow pretty clean at this point. So I'm gonna try and keep it going there. Uh, but any anything else, Gooch? I'm trying to think. We um, talked about the. We didn't really talk about Duplicate dying. Oh and, right, and that and whole immortal. idea with Immortal, how he's kind of losing it. Yeah, it was it was interesting. I don't know. It didn't, do, do you like Immortal? I do, but I don't feel like we're getting... We didn't get a ton out of him. We know he's kind of losing it from coming back so much, it seems. And yeah. He found someone age, who, who... His he, age is just kind of like... Kind of wearing on him. him. Yeah. And then he found, you know, a person in Duplicate that was experiencing kind of the same thing as him and that had this curse that they had to deal with. What, what's, what's his thing again? Is he, like, cursed or is he... Him? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think they exp- I feel like they explain it in the first season because he's like a Neanderthal or something. Right. And he's been around for like 
Yes. Or he was, yeah, and then he like yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he like hit, he's like Vandal Savage. Yeah, and I think it was a, <laughs> yeah I think it was like a meteor or something that he touched yeah. that like irradiated yeah, him. And I mean he's you know he's like Abe Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> I saw you, someone do a makeup. It was like uh, Michael Fassbender like made up as him, and I was like, ooh, that does look pretty good. As a immortal. Yeah. Um, speaking of immortal, so Ross Marquand voices him and he also voices like a lot of other people in the show. I think there is a clear reuse of voice actors in this show that I notice all the time. Interesting. Like, um, um, Eve's mom is like, uh, I think it's Gray Delisle who voices her and she's like four other characters in the show. Like main characters? Yes. Like one, yeah. It's funny because I really have I'm just noticed. like, uh, like, I know like. By contract, they have to do like three voices per thing, like as a union SAG. Is it SAG, right? SAG Astra, yeah. Yeah. I believe that's, yeah, they're part yeah, of Yeah, like a, a, as a part voice of actors, the, the Yeah, yeah, they yeah. should be. Part no, of the they're same in guild. There. I, I know they so. have a guild, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like the, like when you get contracted to do a work as a, as a, in the union, you do three voices, like minimum. Right. Um, so they kind of reuse them. I mean, Kari Payton is the same way. He's like Black Samson and like 17 other characters. And I'm like, God damn it, Kari Payton. I know your voice too well. You know who I noticed was in Batman Arkham Knight when I was playing the other night and I started off it was, uh, Charles. He's in a, Charles from, uh, Red Dead. He's in a lot of shit yeah, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like, again, again, like I think it's like, is this a production issue? Like, are we not cost saving? I think it's are, probably are we saving costs. Are we, are we like adhering to the union rules? Like, why am I hearing like all the same voice I will actors say, like 17 times? I didn't notice that at all. But like now that you've pointed it out and I probably could go back and be like, Oh yeah, here, Oh, here, here. But yeah. that didn't really stick out to me, like in the moment, at least. Yeah. But it's interesting yeah, that you point that out because I wouldn't have have noticed. Yeah, it's mm. usually like the side characters who are doing that. Like obviously, that Stephen Yoon is not voicing yeah. anyone else He's besides Mark. Uh, um, that's funny. All right, Kuj, last question. Yeah. Do we need Do we need a live action adaptation of this at any point? No. Of Invincible. No? no, I don't think so. Do you think it would be like? Do you think we sh- not? Do you think it shouldn't be done? Do you think it could be done? I guess it could be the boys exists. Right. Um No, I think it's is okay. I think so too. Why? Cuz they've been t- well cuz there's always there's been murmurs for a while about a live action adaptation from Seth Rogen and like that production company cuz they were working on it. We haven't heard anything like at all real yeah, recently. Yeah, I think like can't we just finish the No, I agree. The I, I do think it comes down to unfortunately this thing that I feel like we're talking about a lot recently is that that animation thing. I think you will get like a lot more normies for back of a letter term to a movie to a to to even if it was actually even a really show, you think like a live action show or it, like i know people like i'm curious to see the numbers this show is doing it's animated so it automatically puts it in this little category that people won't watch it because it's animated exactly because yeah. you're fucking stupid and if you don't watch to something because it's animated you you truly have no taste or culture you can leave i don't um, agree with that but <laughs> yes <laughs> 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 no, no I, I, but I get no. I do get what you mean, though. It's annoying that, because that's like that enters the Star Wars conversation. No, absolutely. A little bit too no, there. and I listen. I I totally uh, I agree with it. Sucks. I don't blame the like the quote unquote normie person for having that thought process just because that's kind of how things had been in the past. I think that's truly how it was for a yeah. while. Yeah. And, and but uh, you know, barring like anime and some of those really amazing like Akira films and stuff from like the eighties. But as far as like you know, Westerners go, it was not a big thing aside from like your Disney movies and things like that. Oh, so Akira, I said you said Akira films, and I'm like like oh, like Akira, Akira. and like, I meant like other, the, Akira and other films. I should yeah. say. Have you yeah. seen Akira? I've never seen uh, the animated. No, or okay. never, that's the only one, obviously. But uh, yeah, I've yeah, never, you've seen, never it. seen it. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, we should watch. Definitely that on the list. I mean, you go back and look at the quality of that shit. Even me as a layman, oh I'm like, God. yeah, it looks wild. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's really good animation. It's just sadly in the West, it's just not the same. So no. I. In the way of how it's received. So I, I kind of wouldn't mind a live action adaptation of this if it did get more eyes on it, but I'm not begging for it at all. You know? Yeah, so. I, 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 I don't think it's something we need. I don't think it's something we need to do. Is the is the animation like not good enough? That is that why we need a live action? Like why do we need a live action? You know, I was seeing I think I saw on like TikTok a reel of like, oh like fan casting, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool to do like you know, as just having fun. And then it's like, you know, like some people are recasted in the roles and some aren't like, you know, Steven Yoon would probably be a good Mark Grayson. I think he, he'd be a little too old at this point. He is older, but like, you know, think about, I mean, 
he is younger when he's Glenn. That's what but, I mean. Yeah. But he does have like a baby face. I mean, I think him sure. being Asian too kind of helps with his with the like his age of sure. how, his his appearance. Um, yeah, like you know, could you could you get J.K. Simmons to do Omni Man? Like I, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, like you know even though he, even though he's a buff old man, you know who you get to do Omni Man. Uh, what's his name? Why am I forgetting his name? I'm his his face is in my head. He's on the advertising show. Or it was on AMC. Fuck. The advertising show. Mad Suits. Mad Men. Who is Oh, um, uh, John Hamm. John Hamm. John Hamm is Omni Man. Easy. That's such a he, him with the stash. I could see that in, in a second. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. I think it could be done, and I I wouldn't be necessarily against it out the gate, especially if. Seth Rogen and them were in charge of it, and Evan Goldberg, who you know they've been doing the boys, they they do these shows. It seems to be in capable hands to me. But yeah, do we need it? I don't think so. But if it were to get more ball, eyeballs on it, uh, yeah, I'd take it. Yeah, yeah. So all in all, final thoughts. I do. I did like season two. I think I more have issues with the production of Invincible that are kind of bleeding into my enjoyment of the show. Fair enough. And again, I think the clip that it's taking and the sizes of the season don't help. It kind of just comes and it goes like it, yeah. it's, it's in and it's out. Do you think and, it could use it, two more episodes? Because these are me. They're like 45, 50 minute episodes. Yeah, episodes. for sure. So I mean, I, I think I like, I, I feel like a lot of streaming shows have gotten into this six to eight episode cadence I, where, and I, I remember when like Daredevil first started, I think Daredevil was like at 16 or something and like that. I was that. like, let's rein it in. I remember then, us having I, those I think like 12 is good. That's like, that's chunky without being small. I think like eight, just on, just on not even episode length, but episode right, number. number. I think eight to 10 is a sweet spot for me personally. Okay. Or maybe even you can maybe like, go, I'm, like, you I, can maybe I go wish up you, as high I wish school. I had a 12 episode show to be like, yeah, this one. was good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's <laughs> I the, don't think there are any. And that's the problem. Like there's, there's a, there's a fine dance and I, I don't know. I felt like this aptly covered everything in, in a way that didn't feel super rushed or, or super bogged down for me. So I, I felt like the pacing and the length of this was good, but sure. I think you could stretch it out by two episodes for sure. But don't go, once you start getting to, like, remember when the new Daredevil show was announced and they were like... 18 episodes? And I'm like, don't do that. Yeah, Stop. see, I was kind of, like, kind of like that. See, I, uh, and I guess it depends on what length you're going, because if they are 35 a, minute episodes, 18 that's episodes different. means you don't, uh, you would, you know, if you were to split that up, that's two seasons. But like one season, like, I like the idea of like a one season good show that is like 18 episodes and they know that's going to be one season and they like do it that's out a whole, like that. That's a different but thing like too, yeah. shows are rarely like that. Like we know fallout will probably get a second season. I mean, it, there's no way it's, not it hasn't been point. announced and I don't, Apparently, again, I, they're, I don't they're know good. how it ends. I know you finished it, but there absolutely leaves room open for a second one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like you have to, and, right. You don't definitively end. And apparently something. there's, there was something like how it's like quote unquote already re- there was a, an article going around that it was already renewed, but it's been kind of like debated because of uh, apparently they'll get some significant tax breaks in California. So they'll be able to shoot the show at like a, a very low rate. Uh, and also it's doing incredibly well. So and uh, and also that's an example of an eight episode show. Yes, that was exactly what you were. What First I was episode. For. If, and sec, if second episode was hour 15 minutes first was episode like, was an hour 15 minutes let's yeah. go baby well yeah. that's, that's a setup yeah exactly like, like that and I noticed like I went through the episode list for Fallout and I was like 46 was but this, like, that was the th- shortest one yeah but yeah. again when you have like 62 minute episodes and like 80 basically all the other ones 70, were 60 like, minutes you're kind of like balancing it out a yeah. little bit like obviously like one will probably be shorter than than some uh, um but yeah invincible episodes lengths are good for i agree sure. yeah. like i think this show as a 20 minute wouldn't work yeah um, you'd have to break it would have to have 16 episodes yeah and so, it's like that pacing then starts getting real weird so why don't you lead us out with some final thoughts and then absolutely we'll yeah i mean I, I thoroughly enjoyed invincible season two i can't wait to see what season three brings i think it's really kind of going to get into even more of the 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 nitty gritty that i'm excited to about yeah, with like the yeah. Viltrumite we've kind of just started you know? i did love especially with mark's arc I, I love that kind of stinger at the end with Alan the alien talking to to Alan man and he's like i miss my wife or he's like, I think I miss my wife, and the way he's like looking yeah, I at, I think I miss my wife, <laughs> and it's so good, and it's so good, I and, and it cuts, and I'm like, like seven, now I'm well, excited. That's actually yeah, not true. He has had sex, and, and <laughs> you know, he has that yeah, with, yes, with a with a weird uh, praying mantis type woman. Um, 
yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to see where we go from here. I'm hoping we get it at least next year, maybe it, with all this stuff done. Hopefully the production issues kind of subside if there really are even, or just, you know, the cadence gets better. And I, they've been very vocal about how I'm glad you agree with me. I don't think I'm like being like, no, no, gripish and like kind of like getting the, on the a, get on a soapbox sure. no, about no, no, it. No, no. Like, I'm I, like, I, I do feel like there's a genuine issue here. No, I think it's just. It, uh, maybe issue okay, they seem to can, they seem to be too vocal about it to be honest well vocal about the time like i think with the especially with how it was coming out uh, uh, the 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 breakup of the season i think that comes down to amazon i don't think that comes down to the showrunners yeah, in my that's, personal that's opinion. crazy i think that's amazon being like no this is how we want to i was always cool with walking dead it. doing mid-show finales because again they would break for the holidays and then they come back after and yeah. it, it, it worked and again it's a longer season but i also well like originally i'm like oh they need more fucking time you yeah. know like like, and I'm sure they did, you know? Right. I'm not... No, absolutely. Yeah, like, I, I don't buy that, like, it was done. Like, I... I oh, I, well, but I think I, that's I, like, I think they always had a plan that but way. But I think that's kind of like a lot of animated shows, where it's like, sure, could it get even better? Yes. I'm like, but, ba Bad Batch has been one and through. No, that's true, but also, Bad Batch, the way they animate that is much simpler. You they think? Yeah, because they use... It's like a video game program. Whereas, sure. like, you don't have to animate every frame. You're literally, like, controlling sure. character models yeah, and just yeah, doing... Yeah. Like, you're, you're animating like yeah. that, whereas, like, this is actual. Do you, have, do you have a preference? Like, I know you're watching Bad Batch Season 3 right now, so, like... Star Wars, they've honed that art style so well. Yeah, they really have. Where you've gone from... If you go back to... I mean, you've done it. Yeah, when you go yeah, back to I, Clone I Wars it. Season 1 compared to the end of Clone Wars... Yeah, it's like night and day. It's night and day. The character models don't... like. I still feel like there is a weird floatiness to character models when they walk in those, those shows. But overall, it feels weighty. They feel well done. I, I think there's room for both of them, but I... I think I tend to yeah, err more towards Invincible's in, like Invincible, old Justice League style almost even in a way. It's definitely more old school. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, you know, I think a lot of shows we get this like 3D kind of style, which I'm fine with. And I think it works for Clone Wars and Rebels and Bad Batch. I'm, I'm excited to w fucking watch Bad Batch. It's a shame we're probably not going to like, again, my fault. We won't be doing a hot take on season three. No, right. I mean, we, I could always catch you'd have a lot. Yeah, yeah, would, yeah. yeah. Dude, there are so many shows yeah. coming out. We're trying to watch Masters of air right. we got fallout like there have been a lot of shows lately but that's good um yeah i i think it was funny last year we were talking about like between between the movies and shows we watched that like we did not as many movies and much more shows yeah. and i was like i would have not have thought that but this year we'll probably end up pouncing actually we like in terms of movies yeah i don't know what the fuck's coming out this year like yeah. in terms of comic book stuff we don't have a lot and no, we've only, we only we've only reviewed and... well we'll review two movies Madam Raven. Web and um, Rebel Moon. Yeah. Rebel Moon will yeah. be in a week. Oh, gosh. But there, you know what's a funny example of like that comparison? It's a really interesting example, actually. When you watch the Green Lantern, the animated series. Yeah. Oh, that, that's all 3D animation. Yeah. But it's still in the Paul Dini art style, which is interesting. So, so it's weird. So it's like it, it works. By the end, I actually really liked it. But I, I still remember watch it. watching it because I didn't even know it existed uh, and, and, until I, like, I found it. And because it was only like two seasons, but they dive into like the Red Lantern core and all that stuff. Like it's it's interesting. It's well done. And the Blue Lanterns, all that like the emotional spectrum. But yeah, I, I think there's a place for both of them. But I do think I like the more kind of classic style that Invincible goes for, for sure. Anything else, though, Gooch? No, that's it. We went on some dive drives. I think so, too. Yeah, but it's a good one. It's, it's fun stuff. Please go watch Invincible. I think it's very good, especially if you can just watch it all at once right now. It's an easy kind of binge. Uh, but, you know. This has been a good time. Thanks for watching with us live on twitch.tv slash Delco Nerd Network. We really appreciate your time. You can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are found. Just search Delco Nerd Network on your favorite service. Uh, on all your social medias, we're there. Everywhere with an at sign. We are at Delco Nerds. We've got a Facebook page. We've got a Discord channel. All that good stuff will be linked down below. Feel free to pop in and chat with all of us nerds here in Delco. We have a lot of fun conversations, and we are excited to have any more show up so please come come hang uh you can find all this information on our website delco nerd network.com of course you can even email us your comments questions or concerns delco nerds at gmail.com we'd be happy to get back to you but for gooch i've been trio thanks for watching guys stay nerdy and we will see you next time